Hello my friends, it is Simon Miller here and I hate making these videos. However, as we've said on other videos like this, much like when Brody Lee tragically passed away, uh, as you know, if you're a long time watcher of What Culture Of, this is the first video you've ever seen. We do why videos where I slap my head and I, and I ask why and they are scheduled videos to a certain extent. Some of them are reactive, but there's no way I can do this week's why video and make it about the Royal Rumble or AEW or WWE or whatever it may be because it would feel very disingenuous and it would feel very disrespectful because if you don't know, in the early hours of this morning, at least my time, uh, Jay Briscoe, he of the Briscoe's tag team, did pass away in a car crash. Now, at the moment, we don't have many details, so I don't want to speculate and I don't want to say anything um, out of turn. But again, 38 years old, family, absolutely crazy news. So me and all the What Culture guys thought it was best just to sit down, which I know it seems a little bit weird, but I don't want to be standing up, throw my arms away around and just dedicate eight to 10 minutes talking about Jay Briscoe, his impact on the pro wrestling industry, but also his impact on others. Because if you have been on Twitter or any kind of social media today, you would have just seen an outpouring of love for Jay Briscoe, not only for the person he was, but for his family but also the amount of help that he gave to other wrestlers. Now, I'm not gonna be able to name them all, and I'm sure I'll, I would have forgot some anyway, but Sami Zayn said, you know, his career wouldn't have gone the way it did without the Briscoes. Seth Rollins mentioned it, Sami Callahan, there was a tweet, by, a tweet by Triple H. So, I mean, this is a guy, I mean, let's just focus on his wrestling for the time being, because it, it, my own personal experience, well, I have two personal experiences with Jay Briscoe, both the sort of a personal one and an impersonal one, because, I mean, They've been in Ring of Honor for years, right? They've been doing this a long time. And I remember when I was a much younger man and I was kind of just getting into sort of outside of mainstream professional wrestling. The Briscoes were one of the first tag teams that I found. One of the first Ring of Honor matches I ever saw was El Generico and Kevin Owens taking on the Briscoes. Now at the moment, I can't remember you know, what year that was, but it was a long time ago. And I'm sure if you'd watch it today, you'd be like, oh, you know, they look so young. But it was just... One of those things where all of a sudden you watched it and you're like, this is like nothing else I've ever seen because it was almost out of control in one sense, but clearly they had planned it to be that way. And I think if you go through all the Briscoes matches right up to the stuff they were doing with FTR last year, they always had that sense of foreboding and they always had that sense of danger, but they were so damn intense and they would just drag you in so, so effortlessly. And it's one of the reasons they, they have been going for so long. Like you cannot survive in any kind of industry for what 20 plus years whatever it was be probably a bit less than that but, you know a long ass time unless you have something about you have the skill and you don't sort of adapt and grow as performers and they both did that so to think that before you even get to 40 you're not here anymore i mean i don't even know what you can possibly say and going to my own personal experience i believe it was during all in weekend uh it was we had the convention the starcast convention and we got to interview the briscoes and it is genuinely one of the interviews i have remembered ever since because they absolutely rinsed me i'm sure if you've ever seen them in other interviews they were a bit nuts <laughs> in, in a good way but they knew how to sort of poke and prod the bear in the best possible way and they absolutely ripped into me in the best possible way and i remember walking off thinking well i was just laughing to myself and phil who i'm sure edits this videos and is always out there on uh, on the trips making sure the videos come to life we were both you know we thought that that's a good interview you know that that's going to be one this um, going to have sort of a life of its own in, in many ways, which is why it's so difficult to talk about now. Again, I do struggle a little bit because I do not want to take the grief away from his friends and family. I can't even imagine what they're going through. It must be absolutely horrific. But in my small little world, I did have this interaction with them and they were super duper nice. They were super duper friendly. And I also remember, obviously we don't have this on tape, but when that interview was done, they said those magic words you always want to hear. Was that all right? Which... I mean, it sounds a ridiculous thing to say, but there is something to that because they wanted to make sure they gave you the content that you were looking for. And it was all right. Hence why I sit here in, what was it, 2023? Don't know why I had to think about that. And it was one of the first things that came to my brain because I suppose that somewhere, you know, deep down in my subconscious, I still think about it. And, you know, I'd still uh, enjoy it, I suppose, for lack of a better term. Now, of course, I do think we have to talk about this, even though it's quite hard, but social media can be a very savage and very difficult place and anyone that has done any kind of um, activity with a tweet or whatever has probably had one reply talking about the controversial comments that jay made years and years ago about 10 years ago now look me as a white 
bald, straight man doesn't really get to have a say in that. You can disagree, but this is just my opinion, how I see it. However, and I'm not going to drop names because I do not think it's fair. I have not asked their permission. Over the years, I have talked to professional wrestlers, people in the industry who are not white, they're not bald, and they're not straight. And every single one that had any kind of interaction with Jay Briscoe would always tell me, if I had a relationship with him, of course, that he you know, absolutely regretted the comments that he did made. He would go out of his way to try and make amends for those comments. He apologized over and over and he grew. And he, I suppose, educated himself to understand why he, he shouldn't say that. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't have that conversation. I think it's absolutely deplorable to have it on today of all days, at least let, let the dust settle a little bit. But if somebody has gone out of their way to you know, try and right those wrongs, I suppose. I do think they need to be listened to and I do think they need to be heard, especially if the community in question, you know, has, has chatted to this person and gone, no, no, they're serious about this. They, they totally mean it. Now, I don't want to spend too long on this, but I understand how YouTube works. I understand how the comments will work. And that doesn't mean that, you know, you have to forget what somebody has said, because of course, you know, there's nothing more hurtful than words. The phrase sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me is absolute gibberish. I would somebody, I'd rather somebody broke my arm <laughs> and said someone hor said something horrible that's going to stay with me for the rest of my life. But I didn't want to just skirt past it because again, I understand that people are going to want to talk about it, but we have to allow people to change and we have to allow people to grow. And we have to let people realize that they've made a mistake and try and get back on the right path. And everything I've heard sounds like he, he did he did try and, and do that, which I actually think makes this whole thing, well, it doesn't make it even worse. It's just such a, it's such a, it's just a crazy situation. I mean, 38 years old is, is no age. And I sit here today and I honestly, I don't really know what to, to say about it. I woke up this morning and I saw the news and I thought I'd misread it, or I thought it was some ridiculous, crappy storyline that we were doing and then you soon realize it is real. And the thing that I always say, and again, what an idiot, what an umpty, what a cheesy son of a gun, I totally get that, is that let's all just try and be nicer to each other today, right? If somebody annoys you, just let it go. Go tell your loved ones that you love them. Give somebody a hug. I get it's all ridiculous stuff, but I think when these things do happen, it all of a sudden becomes a little bit more important, right? And it kind of reminds you to try and enjoy life every single day as much as you possibly can. Back on to more sort of wrestling rated stuff. I also remember watching the Briscoes versus CM Punk and Colt Cabana. I mean, that's kind of a crazy situation now. Back at Death by Dishonor 2, I think. I'm pretty sure it was a two out of three falls match. And once again, that was really early in my independent wrestling career, if you can even call Ring of Honor that. But once again, it was just so damn violent in a non-violent way. Like, I remember when they had their big trade-off, as you know, often would happen in R08 matches, they were just slugging away at each other. And again, because I wasn't necessarily used to things like that, you kind of look around like, do they, do they know what pro wrestling is? Or has somebody not told them? We also went at it with the Motor City Machine Guns more than once, and if you know anything about those two teams, you know that it was awesome. And even though we kind of touched upon it um, earlier, you know, the series they had with FTR in 2022, I mean, it was sublime. I don't wanna say it was perfect, because you know, there's always, there's always room for improvement. But that last match especially, you know, the double dog collar match, I had actually had that spoiled before I did sit down to, to watch the Ring of Honor pay-per-view because I was away. So we got to it a little bit late because I had to make sure I get home. It's a, long, it's a long, boring story. So I kind of knew how crazy it was going to be. But I think the best thing I can say about it is somebody, people have come up to me and said, Simon, you're not going to believe this match. It's off the chain. It's off the chart. It's going to absolutely blow your mind. So I sit down with these expectations and it actually managed to, you know, reach a whole new level, a whole, a whole new bar that, I, that I, wasn't, I wasn't expecting. It's one of those matches when I finished, I said to myself, well, I'm going to have to watch it again. Now I've done myself a, 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 an injustice here because I haven't actually gone back to it. But I think I will use today to go and watch that match too. Because if you haven't seen it, Again, if somebody walked in here right now and said, Simon, I think it's one of the best matches I've ever seen, I'd be like, um, I'm sorry, one of the best matches of the year, I should say, or ever seen. I could totally understand that too. But certainly if you were trying to argue that it's one of the best matches of 2022, I don't think you can argue it. I, I really don't think you can. It was, it was absolutely excellent. And it was almost the perfect summary of the Briscoes or Jay Briscoe's career. I know I'm repeating myself a little bit, but that idea that you can have this unfrenzied or this frenzied chaos and yet somehow it was all planned to begin with. I don't even think you can learn that in many ways. I think you're just born with it. So I have rambled 
I've rambled long enough. The main point of this video is just to, again, send out all the love and all the positive thoughts to Jay Briscoe's friends and family, his brother, of course. I can't, I can't even fathom what anybody must be going through. And let's just all, as a community, if that's what we want to call wrestling, try and come together today. And please do remember that, you know, he's got kids and he has a family. And I don't think we need to be saying anything untoward today. Come say it to me instead. I will take it on the chin. I will take it on my bald head. So yes, once again, rest in peace, Jay Briscoe. Life is way too short. There is no, there is no age to, to pass away. But again, much like we did with Brody Lee, let's keep him in our thoughts and let's keep his memory alive. Again, sounding like some kind of Hallmark card, but we should watch a match today, go see a promo, go check out an interview, even mine, if you want some kind of connection. Um, and that's it. I don't really know what to say. I'm not going to do all the like, share, subscribe stuff because, again, I don't think that is, uh, that's the right thing to do. But just to tie into to the start of the video, I don't, what else are we going to talk about, right? How can you talk about anything else? Wrestling is important. And I love wrestling. It is, I mean, like, it's like wrestling threw up on me. Look how much I am involved with it. But it is the most important of the non-important things. And when it comes to your health and your happiness and your life, that really is number one. So, again, just a, it's a terrible terrible day terrible terrible news i hope you're all doing all right out there and again if you are going through any hardships just try and enjoy the day as much as you possibly can okay that's me done simon miller signing out and a ridiculous way to end the video take care of yourself i'll see you soon